Austin, Texas country, it's Cook FM, Eric Rains, hanging out with Jesse Robb Jr. How are you, man? I'm doing wonderful. How are you, brother? Uh, I am well. I've learned to tell everybody it. It's just say I'm good, uh, that I'm well. I think that's grammatically correct. Not that I'm mm -hmm. hung up on uh, English or anything. I don't know. I still say ain't on the radio and feel pretty good about it. I, I do too, man. It ain't, it ain't nothing. That's a there you go. Story. There we go. Now, uh, for those that aren't listening and can't see, we're doing uh, kind of the Zoom thing today. Where are you at? Because that is such cool wallpaper in the back. I am at uh, Austin Motel. Hanging out in Austin. the Austin Motel. Now, I, is that just some some place you normally just go hang out? Do you, do you have a reason for being there today? And I had some meetings here in Austin and... Uh, I met with uh, Mitch from BMI and had lunch with him. Uh, they're not actually open, but um, they've got a new uh, BMI building going in. They came here to Texas, and uh, so we're happy for that. And uh, we're in the process of making a move over to BMI, so had to have a meeting there and just kind of talk shop and uh, talk our strategy uh, for this year. Okay, I'm a big fan of Mitch. Love that guy. Where did he take you? Did he take you to that cool uh, restaurant that's like right, by, right below BMI? Yes, the taco place. Yes, where Wero's or yeah, absolutely. We went to uh, we went to Wero's, I guess is how you say it, and yeah. uh, had fish tacos and enjoyed that. And uh, man, we we went there once before, so that was my second trip to there. So it's it's a cool town, man. It's right there off South Congress, and uh, man, just enjoying it being here. You know, uh, it's kind of sad seeing all the venues and stuff shut down, but hopefully, man, we get to get back to touring and, and get back to doing what we love before too long. Now we talked not too long ago about, I mean, obviously this is your full-time gig now. And at one point you, you know, you were double dipping, you're working in all kinds of construction, making silly money. And then you decided, you know what, I'm going to make this full-time gig. I mean, uh, I, and it's a hard one. A lot of times you hear about, I left college to go out and lit and, you know, and live a dream you were making really good money. And then you decided I'm going to go out and I'm going to, cause you're, you're all your songs are doing well on the charts and have continued. Um, you decide I'm going to take the leap and you go out and, and go do it full time. And then boom, coronavirus hits worst timing ever. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, Man, it was kind of, I mean, I, I don't want to say it was a blessing, but I guess you can find the blessing in anything, you know, sure. and, uh, man, it was, it was good for me to kind of um, just decompress for, you know, I had, um, I had buried phone line for a living. Uh, I was a contractor for one of the biggest phone companies in the world. And um, man, I did that for 16 years and um, man, it just, you get to a point where you just get, you just get burned on stuff, you know, and I, and I was at that point where it was just like, you know, I'm just not enjoying this anymore. I don't care how much money I'm making. Sure. I get that. And, man, I talked with my wife about it and she said, you know what, let's, let's do it. You know, I believe in what you're doing. And um, so, man, we, we kind of made the decision to invest in ourselves this year. And uh, like I said, man, it was a blessing, you know, to be able to spend some time with, with uh, my kids and my wife um, and just kind of get back to what's important, you know, I mean, we, we get to running so fast and you just forget sometimes like, man, that stuff doesn't matter. You know, that's, we, we worry about all these things and in the grand scheme of things, a lot of that stuff just doesn't make a hill of beans. So, um, man, it was kind of an eye opener for me. Yeah. It was probably at the worst possible time to make the leap, but, um, every true vision will be tested for authenticity. And uh, I think it's just a test for us. And uh, I mean, I feel like we're passing the test. You know, we've, we've probably wrote a whole nother album worth of songs uh, in the first few weeks of being, you know, down for this stuff. Um, so man, we've got some great songs, you know, just, just stuff. I, I had a whole album ready to release when this hit. Right. We were already kind of sitting pretty, if you will, but um I don't know, man, the game's changing for everybody. I don't know that anybody really knows what to do right now. I don't know that um, anybody's going to make, you know, all the right decisions, but man, this is what I love to do. I love to write songs. 
Um, I love to share my songs with people and get to go out and, and play them. And uh, it's not always just about playing big arenas or, or you know, to, you know, thousand people or 10,000 people. It's just, man, sometimes the most important show you can go play is to 10 people, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it's, it's a little more nerve wracking for me, honestly, just to go out and play for a little small room than it is to go play for, you know, right. you're, you're it's pumping when you're, you're fixing to get on a stage in an arena, when you're going to get on stage in front of 10 or 20 people, you're a little nervous. You're like, man, like this is up close and personal. So, um, plus we're talking to you. Hey, Jesse, <laughs> I know you want to play what you want to play, but yeah, I know. Then you got to, you're literally entertaining to those 10 people. I realize sometimes that, uh, it, it's a little easier when everybody's making noise and you can ignore the person right in front of you. Uh, yeah, look past them, you know, just like, oh, exactly. <laughs> when there's 10 of them, you have to entertain one at a time. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, last time we talked, you also were, it, you'd, you'd already been riding with a bunch of different people. And you were going hunting, and I never heard what the hunt was like because Jesse, I went on my, I went hunting for the first time ever, over the weekend. Now, when I say I went hunting, I was, I went to Salona Ranch in Salado. I think it's about nine thousand acres, and nice. uh, I watched a lot of people hunt. I had never been in a deer blind before, a deer stand. I'm sorry, get all my terminology correct. I'd never been in a deer stand before. So I got up there and uh, it was fun. I'm not, you know, and there's a little 10 year old kid and he, he asked a great question. He said, Eric, has anyone ever asked you before? And I was like, no, I don't think anyone's ever asked me. I think you can see right through this. And, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't own a gun, but no, uh, one of the just bonding with nature and seeing deer and now I didn't pick up a gun and shoot it. I watched it. And uh, there's a lot of people that shot some hogs and deer around me, but I know you were going on a big hunt and I'm, I'm full disclosure or whatever. I don't know if we're hiding anything, but wasn't there a helicopter involved and what was all, the, all that like? Cause that looked a little bit different than what I did. Man, it, it was. And uh, let me just say, man, that um, I, it's awesome that you went out and, and got to be a part of it. Even, you know, not, it's not always just about shooting something, you know, sure. your, great, but watching the woods wake up and watching God's creation is something very special watching the sun come up, the wind start blowing, the birds start chirping. It's just an amazing experience all in itself, you know? And so, um, man, I went, I got to go to the Covered S Ranch um, here a few weeks ago. And, um, you know, we didn't know if we were gonna do a helicopter hunt or anything like that, riding a helicopter at first. And um, when we got there, um, the first day was kind of us, hey, there's a mountain over there go climb the mountain and hunt if you want to. And so, I man, we probably hiked about five or six miles the first day and wore ourselves completely out. And when we got back um, to the lodge that night, uh, Chet, uh, the owner, one of the owners of the ranch, he said, uh, he said, uh, man, you want to go up in the helicopter in the morning? I was like, man, yeah, I'm, I'm a little nervous. And he said, yeah, I seen that. And so they were all kind of <laughs> fun at me. Like, you know, Jesse, there's nothing to be nervous about, you know, and so Chet leaned in after, man, there's 15 or 20 minutes of this going on and them poking fun at me, and so Chet says, listen, if anything happens, don't worry, it'll be catastrophic. <laughs> not, not, not <laughs> well, he's my mind and just calm my nerves there, Chet, I appreciate it. <laughs> As you've so, been in a helicopter before, I've only been in one. And I, you know, the turbulence that goes up and down is one thing, but when it starts going sideways, like, okay, that's a different feeling altogether. Well, man, he gets up there on the side of the mountain and he goes, and you know, you're literally hanging out the side of this thing. Right. Your feet are on the little rail, you know, that you step up into there and you're, you're just wearing your seatbelt. So you're hanging out the side of this thing, wearing like a seatbelt you wouldn't have plane. And, um, he said, man, do you like uh, roller coasters? I'm like, yeah. And he went right to the side of that mountain and went, and just oh, no. went for it. And Came uh, over. Yeah. I go back. After, after the first little bit, you know, 20 or 30 seconds of being in there, it's okay. You're like, all right, you know, whatever. But, uh, man, it, it was a cool experience. Um, I like planes more. Than I like right, yeah. Oh, heck yeah. 
but for the simple fact that like he said man he's like dude if you hit a bird or if, if anything hits that blade it's done it becomes <laughs> That doesn't I mean, call me. I'm, I, I'm, my hands are right now a little anxiety just thinking about dude, that. Me too. I'm just tall. I already did it. And I'm nervous yeah. about it. <laughs> so, yes, to your point, being a part of nature, all of that was great for me. I did learn one thing, and I wish they'd have told me ahead of time if you're going to drink a few beer, do it before you get in the deer stand because you can't get out. So, a lesson learned on that one. And everybody I talked to about it on the air is like, yeah, you. Once the deer or the hogs show up, there's no bet you're not going to the restroom. So I'm learning. It was my first time. So well, man, you got to give them the old. Yeah. And if they don't run, you're good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's a hard lesson to learn. A uh, big day today. Now, do you you unleash a new video, right? Am I correct on this? Mm, man, don't don't make me lie to you right now. I don't know. Um, actually, I saw I, I saw a video today. I don't know if somebody released it or you did or. Um, actually, uh, my manager is in charge of all that, uh, all that stuff like that. But I do, I do think I remember seeing something. Um, I'm not sure if it was sitting here, woman like you or something like that. Right. I think they might have tagged me on Facebook in that. So, um, man, I, we, we did a bunch of, uh, we've done a bunch of them. We're going to release them, uh, throughout the year. Um, and you know, as, as far as our new songs, our new album and stuff, we're going to kind of do the same with that we're changing our plan a little bit from how we used to do it. You know, we just used to, you know, release a single or something and then let the album drop. And now yeah. man with, uh, with Spotify and all that stuff, it's kind of changed the game for us. You know, music gets considered old really fast, especially with how long it takes to actually release a song to radio and then to go out and do a radio tour and then watch it go up the chart and then come all the way back down the chart and then, you know, that can take 30 weeks, 40 yeah. weeks. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's literally, you're lucky if you get a couple singles out throughout the year. So um, instead of our music just being considered old right out of the gate, we really wanted to take a different approach and let people hear our music and hear all of it. So, um, you know, we released uh, uh, Good Beer. It's called Good Times. I call it Good Beer, but Good Times. Um uh, we released, uh, man, what was our other release last year? Oh, um, uh, look good on you. We released look good on you. And, uh, man, both of those songs went number one. So then we thought, well, um, let's split this thing up into like EPs, if you will. And so do four songs on each EP and hold them back. That way we get those four songs out to people instead of it just being, four songs that might have gotten to you and then eight songs that are just considered old that you've never heard unless you came to a show and bought the album. It's true. Yeah, and I've noticed that a lot of artists now, talking to Jesse Robb Jr., uh, they'll put songs on, they call them on DSPs, the digital streaming platform only. So, and to your point, a lot of times you're releasing singles and the album takes a long, long time. And sometimes the album never comes out because uh, you know, it takes a little longer to, as you pointed out. So a lot of times songs are being released just digitally for the digital streaming fans. And then we've got the radio. Two, um, we've got, um, so obviously the first EP was, um, good times. Um, I'd look good on you. And those were our radio releases. And then, um, the state I'm in and keep it country or our digital platform releases. Right. So, Man, just trying to diversify a little bit. You know, we used to be able to go out and play songs for a living, Eric. And now <laughs> we're yeah. going to kind of throw the change up. And, uh, you know, it, man, I think we just got to stay on our feet if we're going to make it through this, you know. And, and um, trying to utilize our digital platform um, plus all that you guys do for us, you know, through radio. Um, we're going to have to really put all that together. And then, you know, real shows, man, they're not going to. I don't, I don't think we're going to be doing any of that for a little while. Um, we're starting to book, you know, we are starting to book stuff, but it's kind of, you know, March, April type stuff. It's on down the road a couple, two or three months still. So man, we're doing some private shows. Um, and, and that's kind of what we've been doing, you know, hunting and, and, uh, man, we, we sing for food. I mean, it's, it's a real thing now. Like, Oh, you, we can shoot a deer. Oh yeah. We'll come sing. So, um, you know, trying to feed the family and, uh, still be able to play my songs and, 
it's just, uh, man, the game's changing and we're going to change with it. It's the hustle, man. I mean, think about this. I'm here in my house. This is like it used to be the spare bedroom. You're in a hotel in Austin. A year ago, we'd have been sitting in the studio together, but the hustle has changed for everybody, but it, it is. High dollar hotel, I might add. I mean, I don't know if y'all have this behind me, but this is some pretty high caliber stuff right here. Come on. I, the, that's the first thing I noticed. It, the, the, I knew it was, it, that's kind of a bougie, I like that, that word. Uh, Can we say that? <laughs> bougie, I don't, I, I just threw my man card away as well. Uh, <laughs> but I also said a deer blind, and I think that's wrong too. No, that's right. That's right. Oh, okay, good. But uh, I, I just look like, hip. That's what I would want to stay in. I think, you know, the Austin Motel is kind of iconic. Uh, so, yeah, the, the, the hustle has changed for everybody from selling your wares online to there was, a, there was a time that you would not even mention a streaming service. Because let's be really right. honest, for the most part, they rip everybody off. You got to get like a thousand plays before you get a penny. But now that no one's playing, yeah. I, and I'm even mentioning it. Go, go you know, go see or listen to my friends over on Spotify. That's completely competing against what I do right here on the radio. But let's be really honest. If you don't get some of those spins, you guys are hurting guys and gals. It's the, uh, I mean, it is what it is. There's a lot of people that, that have had to figure out a completely different hustle. But it's, all, it's also Jesse. It's also what everyone has had to do to stay living in an industry that some people aren't allowed it you know they can't go do what they want to do anymore they had to they had to say we can't do this anymore we got to start completely we've lost, over lost a lot of great musicians um you know obviously we've we've lost a lot of great musicians um uh, you know to covid this year um a lot of my heroes man and a lot of your heroes probably different people that we've looked up to in the music business but um definitely you know people just don't have to stay in power um uh, to just sit and not do anything, yeah. you know? What I mean? So right now, if you don't get creative and try to do something, um, yeah, you probably won't be here whenever it gets going again, unless you go get a job um, flipping pizzas and then come back. Um, no offense, pizza flippers. <laughs> nothing against, yeah, no, nothing against. I mean, I'm liable to be doing that before it's all over with. So um, y'all pick me a little later tonight, downtown Salado, I'll be, we can yeah, flip on. singing pizza, pizza uh, boy or something. I don't know. I mean, but hey, I'm, I'm game for anything, you know. Uh, Whatever it takes. Enough, you, you'll find a way. And uh, man, that's what we're doing. We're just, we're just making a way. Man, I was going through videos, just thinking about. I mean, obviously, I met you uh, three, four years ago at Music Fest, and the hustle there because that was one of, you know, I hadn't met you that much before, and every day you were in front of me with a guitar playing a song. Uh, your hustle has continued, and I use that word a lot because I do think that's what musicians in this industry and the artists and the, so the songwriters have to do is continue to hustle. But and then we fast forward, uh, and again, hotel, uh, home studio—it's what we have to do to keep rolling. But uh, it does keep rolling. And as far as the songwriting that you've done, and uh, I'm great for that too, man. Uh, you know, we've we've got to be a part of some great songs this year um, and last year with some of the best songwriters in the world. And, and I, I don't say that lightly. I know there's a lot of great songwriters out there, um, but man, you know, uh, and, and I don't wanna be that name dropper and all that, but I have written with some phenomenal, phenomenal writers. Um, and we've got some songs that we're really proud of. Um, you know, that's one of the things that as songwriters, you know, we try to keep getting better and, and try to not write the same song every single time. So man, just um, being able to still do that it is a, a big plus for us, man. Just just knowing that there's light at the end of the tunnel, you know, man, when it does go, we, we got all these great songs. So, you know, just, man, I hope everybody tries to find the good. I know it's some crazy times, but man, I hope everybody tries to find the good. You know, we all woke up today. Um, we all have, you know, the opportunity to get up and put on a smile and make it happen. And that's what this calls for, man. No matter who you are, uh, life isn't just going to happen right now. You got to make it happen. So, man, that's what we're doing. We're getting out here and making it happen. Well, speaking of making it happen, you do have a guitar in your hand. You mind playing one for us? I'd love to hear something. Man, I do have a guitar in my hand. And, uh, see if this old thing will tune up.
What do you want to hear? You want to hear something new or you want to I'd hear? I'd love to hear something new. I'd love to hear something we hadn't heard before. Man, all right. Um, said, hey, mister, what can I get you? I said, it's going to take a beer and some whiskey. I'm gonna get any good at getting over her memory. See, man, we ride, we fall, then we get up again. We cry, we call, gotta do what it takes to win. Oh, when times get tough, pick yourself up. Life ain't always fair. There ain't a cowboy here that ain't ever been there. She was all packed up, drew a line in the sand. She handed me her keys and a heartache. She didn't even flinch. Heard my heart break. See, man, we ride, we fall, then we get up again. Oh, we cry, we crawl, do what it takes to win. Oh, when times get tough, pick yourself up. Life ain't always fair. There ain't a cowboy here that ain't ever been there. Gentlemen, I'm Rob Jr. hanging out with us. There ain't a cowboy here that ain't that ain't never been there. You fed me that line three or four weeks ago, and the song wasn't finished. That's a good song. And I that with uh, Jason too, just to give a little shout out to my buddy Jason. Uh, I wrote that with him, man. We wrote that song in about thirty minutes, and uh, that was actually Jason's line right there, right when I called him that day to write. Uh, I said, "Man, you got any good ideas?" And he said. Man, I've been saving this one for you. He said, what do you think about there ain't a cowboy here that ain't ever been there? Yeah, and I think everybody can later. relate to that. And cowboy or not. Uh, I hope so. I mean, uh, I kind of feel like it's it's where we're at right now. You know what I mean? You got to kind of pick yourself up by your bootstraps and, and uh, keep going. And, uh, you know, this is just going to separate the men from the boys or, or however you want to say it. But uh, definitely, um, you know, to all my songwriting buddies out there, man, this is uh, this has been a true blessing for all of us to sit back and clear our minds and be able to sit down and focus on something like this. You know, we don't ever get to do it. You've always got a million things going in the studio and running and gunning and doing all these things. So to kind of 
be able to just slow down a little bit and focus on songwriting or just, you know, hone your craft a little bit better, you know, whatever it is. So, man, we've been truly blessed uh, to, to be able to keep going and, and doing what we love, man. I'm, I'm grateful for that. You know, it's funny you say that because that's a, a recurring theme from a lot of different musicians that are continuing to work on the craft throughout this. And I mean, like you said, you can either fold your tent and go a different direction or figure out how to make the hustle work for you. It's all in a perspective. And I keep telling myself that because I've kind of been in the same boat uh, somewhat you have. You can look at your what the good Lord has thrown in your way and go and feel sorry for yourself. Or you can look around and anything that, that goes bad in your life or your world, you can find the grace or the beauty in it. Uh, and it is a, the common thing that I'm talking about is, all right, we had to, we had to fo we're forced to go home. We couldn't play. There were no clubs. Uh, let's be really honest. Uh, they weren't taking the, care of the musicians and artists and the clubs and wherever you could play in the festivals. That was not first on anyone's list to get reoccurring and make happen again. But what I did notice is that a lot of people, the recurring theme, I'm home with my family. I'm getting a chance to write. I'm, I'm start talking to people especially musicians that hadn't been home in forever. They're, they're getting, now they were forced to, but their eyes were open on the beauty of that. Or they had learned something completely different about themselves or their family that they didn't know they could do or, uh, or was going on in their world. So was there something in your world that you, you're like, you know what, I wanna try to do this. Wasn't doing before, new craft, new hobby. Did you get really good at cooking? Did you put on the 40 pounds that we all put on? <laughs> yeah. What, what, yes, <laughs> what went on in Jesse's world? What was different while, while you're going through that other than just some good songwriting and hanging out with family? Um, you know, like I, I said, man, we, uh, my, my wife and I, one of the things we talked about was when investing in ourselves. Yeah, good point. Um, so, um, you know, me being able to invest in my music career, um, I'd never done that. I had, I had always worked a full-time job and then played full-time. I would literally come in on a Friday evening and if one of the guys hadn't came and picked up the trailer or something, you know, I'd run and hit sound check. We'd throw and go or do whatever we had to do. So, man, I never really got to invest in it. I was always kind of doing it, you know, one leg, you know, and, and Howie, um, he told me, man, when are you going to jump in and quit putting your toe in the water? And so that, that hit me, man, like a ton of bricks because I, I thank Holly of him and, and the, I appreciate any insight he gives me, you know, so when he said that, man, it kind of hit me pretty hard. So, um, I invested, um, in myself and we also invested in my wife this year. You know, we built her, a, a, I built a, a building in the backyard and we did a 30 by 40 shop. A she shed? Um, man, it's her she shed. It ain't mine. I promise <laughs> you that. I always thought I was going to be negative. Um, built her a shop and, uh, she started a boutique and, wow. uh, She's a, uh, and they call it Chloe versus Tank, and they're just knocking it out of the park. And I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for that. That uh, you know, she feels like she has a purpose now too. It, it, it was kind of a, it was a cool deal, man. I mean, I know wives are, you know, we feel like they're the most important because they're wives and they're moms, but they don't really feel that way sometimes. They're like, well, I know that, but like I want to have purpose. And so when you hear your wife say that, you're like, oh man, dagger to my heart. You know that hurts. Right. So. You know, for her to stand behind me, it was really easy for me to stand behind her. And, um, man, just to be able to do that and man, hunt with my kids, we've hunted so much and just, um, you know, taught my, my youngest son how to swing an ax. Um, you know, that's a, that's something that most people that could, they couldn't split a log if they had to with an ax. And, uh, you know, so man, my dad used to walk around to walk around a, a a log and never quit swinging an axe and split 20 pieces of wood and never even pick one off the ground. If it was laying down, he could just wah, 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 just keep swinging that axe. So um, we've just been doing little stuff, man, trying to kind of, uh, you know, not hire everything done, if you will. You know, you can't really hire everything done right now. It's like, okay, right. well, we're going to do this and see if we can fix it. Um, so, man, I've been fixing all kind of crap around the house and, man, we've cleaned out everything we've organized the the attic i've gone so far as to organize the attic and lay plywood <laughs> hey, you, want by, like, you want to come by the house i could use some help over here apparently you're yeah, handy I and i'm not <laughs> i do need a job and i yeah. i'm not hard this time so like uh 
man, if y'all want to throw anything my way, yeah, I'm, I'm open. <laughs> I love it. I really do love the, the reinvest in yourself and your family and uh, which is something that a lot of us won't take time to do until we're really old and it's too late because we haven't taken the time to take a step back, smell the roses and all those cliches that we seem to talk about when, in, you know, when we Let's probably see. should be doing that from the very beginning. Absolutely. Have you ever listened to the Steve Harvey deal um, jump? Absolutely. It's great. If you haven't, uh, he, he did it on the, what's the, I can't even remember the show, uh, Family Feud that he hosts. He walks out to the crowd and tells them the jump is one of the most powerful things you could ever listen to. But he's right. I had listened to that. And I listened to a deal by from a guy named Dr. Miles Monroe. It was called The Power of Vision. And The Power of Vision was a very powerful thing for me to listen to. It's about a 45-minute deal. Um, but, man, it really kind of changed my perspective on believing in myself and taking that jump and, and uh, really, you know, trusting in God. And, um, but one of the things that we took from it for the band was good. And, and so no matter what happens, whether we blow a tire out, um, whether something happens at sound check, whether something happens at the show and it's just like the biggest train wreck you've ever seen or whatever it is, we say good. And, Somebody always remembers to say it because you might not be in the right mindset at that point right. to go, oh, well, good. I just screwed that all up, you know, but if somebody else looks at you and goes, good, it man, it kind of changes our mindset and we all go, okay, that was meant to happen, whatever. Just let it roll off your back and keep rolling. So, um, man, me and all the guys, we have just kind of taken that on and, uh, and I love sharing that kind of stuff with people and just kind of you know, sometimes everybody's mind isn't in the right spot, you know, so when you can kind of share them little, uh, you know, pieces of knowledge and stuff that you, you've you learned, they're just great and uh, keeps your mindset in the right place because this is a, man, this music business is a dog eat dog world. So you got to have thick skin and you got to, you know, just be ready for everybody to tell you, man, that's terrible or no, you know, got to be ready for a million no's before you get a yes and stuff. So, um Man, just having that mindset of good, no matter what right. happens, helps you out sometimes. I love it. I love it. Love the uh, perspective and the attitude. Jesse Robb Jr., man, thanks so much for hanging out with us. Uh, and, and hanging out with me, brother. I mean, you always call me back, and I'm grateful for that. <laughs> <laughs> Again, the, the, the hustle has changed, but the spirit and the motivation have, have always been there for both of us, and that's what we do. We just keep we keep it good, and we keep rolling, and, and we jump. Oh, man, as to, as Steve Harvey. I'm kind of getting hippie-ish over here, trying to keep up. I'm just man. losing more. Mine's just man. falling out more. I'm going to need to be able to go get a haircut here before too long, because I can't take it much longer. Well, the beard is strong. Have you trimmed the beard at all? Is it just still full-fledged? And that one, I trimmed that one right there. Now, okay, and, I see it. <laughs> and uh, that's about that's about all I'm going to do, man. I'm 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 boycotting shaving, man. I'm over shaving. It's a way overrated. And, uh, you know, I did cut this thing about, I cut about six inches off of it. And, um, my manager got me to meet Billy Gibbons that night. And so really? I was sore for about a year, maybe a year and a half over that deal. Um, I don't hold grudges. Um, you cut it and then you met him. Exactly. Oh, that, come on, Brian. That was, that was a low blow. I was like, Purposely. I was going to meet Billy Gibbons. And right. you told me to cut my beard that day. Yeah, six was, inches. Yeah, but you know, we know like six inches. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I just like the fact that you got to meet Billy Gibbons. I think that's so cool. I mean, dude, but yeah, I, I might have cool. been a little upset too if I'd have shaved my beard that day. Dude, he was a super cool guy. He was wearing that little beanie yeah. with the, the, you know, and uh, and he had on pajama pants and like his pajamas and so he had that jacket on that he always wears he's like man let me pull my jacket on so he put his jacket on and buttoned his jacket and told brian he was like hey do you mind just taking the picture from the waist up nice. and so he was totally really cool about it man and um very humble and and just approachable um and man i met a lot of cool people through that deal um that was that's uh, texas songwriter you oh yeah um, that i met a lot of those folks and then we were at the Texas, uh, they were inducting him into the Texas 
Heritage Songwriter. Heritage Songwriter Hall of Fame that night. So to be there and to get to rub elbows with a few of those guys was pretty phenomenal for me. You know, it was like, man, this is this is pretty cool. You, you like, was like Ronnie up. Dunn and all those cats there as well as part of that one? Yeah, Ronnie was there. And I've met Ronnie a couple times, man. I met Ronnie um, in Nashville at the sporting club. Um, uh, Ronnie and Kix were actually playing. I was playing Tootsies, and they were playing Broadway. Nice. Oh, <laughs> so, wow. Yeah, so, um, and I didn't know it, but I was there, and Cody was actually there as well. He was going to be playing the same deal. It was like Luke Combs and Cody and John Party and all them, so – Man, I had been writing in sessions all week, and then I realized, well, Cody's there. And so, man, we met up, and uh, we started hanging out and uh, went over to the sporting club. We got to meet Luke Combs, man. Luke was a phenomenal guy. Came in, introduced himself, shook everybody's hand. Totally cool guy. Uh, John Party as well. Very, very nice dude, man. I was – I was, I was, you, you know, you're always elated whenever you meet one of your your – people you kind of look up to and you're like man he didn't suck you know he wasn't right a jerk, you know so um I kind of quit meeting all those people for a while you know I was like man I don't want to meet them you know they're just gonna let me down you know I met a few of them I won't mention any names but it was just like man he was a jerk you know and so um it, at some point you know you're happy to see those people again and go man they were they were awesome they're down to earth and man that's what I want to be you know if I ever make it to that stage uh I've always looked up to uh, Fowler, man. I, I watched Fowler one night. Uh, me and Fowler and Kevin from Bonita Creek, uh, we were sitting down eating, and a guy came up to the table and said, hey, Kevin, um, would you sign my – or take a picture or something? And Kevin stood up from our mill. We're sitting there eating. He stood up from his mill and said, absolutely. Never got bent over it. And so, man, I always remembered that stuff and was like, man, that's kind of – I want to be like that. You know, I want to be approachable no matter how big you get. Um, you know, you should still be that guy. And, uh, Kevin's always been that guy, always been that way to me. And, uh, so man, I, I kind of, man, I, I like to mold, uh, what we do around those people that have, uh, kind of showed us the way. Uh, you know, outside looking in Kevin, probably as far as his fans, I've never seen him once turn down a handshake. Plus, he never treats his fans any different than he treats his friends. There, you walk up and you're instantly a beer drinking friend, or if, if the opportunity allows itself, where you can hang out or, or come on the bus or, or be a part of something he's doing. If he's not on stage in his Superman outfit, so to speak, he always brings you in, which I've always loved. Fan, yeah. radio guy, other musician. So yeah, I'm the same. I'm a fan of music as much as anybody. And I love when my quote unquote heroes don't disappoint, or as you said, don't suck. <laughs> I remember when uh, Terry McBride, big fan, McBride and the Ride, he showed yeah. up to the radio station and we finished the interview. It was Rita and myself and Rita literally said, I'm so glad you weren't a dick. And I, I was like, that was the funniest part of the entire interview. And he wasn't. And he remembers that to this day. And he signed on her you know terry mcbride released rebels and angels is a brand new album this past year and he wrote on it to rita i'm glad i wasn't a dick <laughs> i was like okay i'll never forget that one but yeah because you meet some and they are i mean they're terrible to you they're exactly what you would hope they wouldn't be they let it get to them or or there are some people i know we're going long on this one there are some people that have zero right i mean they don't have a right to be they haven't had a hit they haven't done anything in the industry and they're still not nice. I would just say, start off that way and end that way. It's going to go a lot longer. I, I, and I forget how Mitch put this earlier. It was something along the lines. Money doesn't, doesn't change people. It just shows who they really are. That's true. Yeah. And, um, you ever have a really rich friend that likes super rich over the top could afford anything, but you would never know he had money because he didn't, he or she did not let you know. Cause he wore Velcro shoes, man. That's right. Hey, there's nothing wrong with Velcro shoes. I may have some on right now, my poison hat and my striper, my striper hat. Man, we gotta let you go. I do want to say the name of that song that you sang for us earlier that I that I know is gonna be a big hit. What well, what's it called again and when can we expect to hear it? Uh there ain't a cowboy here, I think is what we're gonna call it. Um there ain't a cowboy here. And uh the whole hook is there ain't a cowboy here that ain't, ain't him there. And that's, uh that's that's the best line I've heard in a long time. 
man, thank you. Thank Don't you. Don't let that one get out too far. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, on a real note, thank you for always making me feel welcome at uh, Coke FM. Y'all have always treated me so awesome. And I love you. I love Rita. Uh, prayers for your wife. and your you, I love y'all. And if y'all need me, you know where to find me. Thank you. Jesse Robb Jr., thank you, buddy. And uh, I can't wait till I still have it. I'm not going to take it home. The last time you were in studio, you left, you left your Yeti that says Jesse Robb Jr. It's still in the exact same spot. I think it still has water in it. There's no ice anymore. But I'm leaving it there because it's it's like a, <laughs> I'm ready for, I haven't had any, I haven't had any artist in studio. So I'm ready for that. Uh, and I can't wait till I can hug it out and tell you in person that I love you and I'm proud of you. Uh, I'll continue. take that, that cup to you and I want you to wash it and uh, go ahead and just drink out of it every day in front okay. of James. And be, you know, you ever heard of this guy? He does it suck. <laughs> but it got to be exactly that, but something close. Love you, man. And uh, we'll, we'll see you on down the road and I'll leave you with good. Good. See you, buddy. Later.